One year on from the devastating earthquake that rocked Christchurch, the people of Canterbury look to the future as they return to a city that has changed forever. Returning to a region also is the State Ocean Swim Series with a stunning new destination. Race three of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series was the Capital Classic, an extended distance of 3.3 kilometres that saw some of the best open water swimmers in New Zealand going toe to toe with a number of the leading swimmers out of Australia. And it was the young George O'Brien who set the early tempo and put some real pressure on Kane Radford, New Zealand's number one seed. As they came under the famous fountain in Wellington Harbour, it was the Australian who got to his feet first to take the crown and steal from the New Zealanders. Kane Radford made a technical mistake, missing the final marker, and found himself having to enter the water again and narrowly hung on from third place, just ahead of our women's champion out of Australia, the great Melissa Gorman. So we move to race four of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series. It's a new destination east of Christchurch. It is the French settlement of Akaroa. A beautiful idyllic town with wonderful pastries and fine cuisine, it has it all. And a wonderful playground for New Zealand's fastest growing sport, open water swimming. And a look at today's course for the more than 500 swimmers on the start line. It is 2.8 kilometres, a straight swim off the main beach in Akaroa, a journey of 1.4 kilometres. They then take a hard right-hand turn, swim from French Bay across to Children's Bay, where they'll exit the water at the wet grounds. Overcast conditions, a low tide and water temperature is 18 degrees. It is conducive. Looking forward to this one. Well, for the more than 500 swimmers, plenty of nerves, but not for our elites. Casey Glover just going through his final dry land stretches. And now a look at our number one seed, Kane Radford. You know, feeling really good, just coming off uh, in the middle of a camp in Rotorua. Um, but, you know, there's a quality field out there. There always is. Um, and the thing with open water is anyone can win it on any day, so it's always open. It is always open and it's all about experience. This is young Grace Somerville, just 16 years of age, and Sophie Batchelor, the pre-race favourite. Yeah, pretty nervous, my first ocean swim, so ready to give it a go. But um, no, I think I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, I guess I'm butterfly backstroke, but so my biggest race is only over 200 metres. Um, so I've got to swim my race, plus an extra 2.4k. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a big leap, but we train, we just push through it. It's going to be good. <laughs> A look at Sophia Batchelor on the start line, our number one seed in the women's race. And Kane Radford, very much the favourite in the men's. Just final adjustments of the goggles. Navigation so key for all of our swimmers. No black lines to follow today. A beach start for all of our swimmers. We are underway from the main beach in Akaroa. History being created for the first time. A grand swim underway, 2.8 kilometres and a number of seeded waves leaving one minute apart. A total field of just over 500 athletes. Joining me in commentary, former Swimming New Zealand representative Scott Rice. Yeah, Mark, a low tide for the start of this swim, 2.8 kilometres. They've got a 1.4 kilometre straight, straight out to Red Point, and very, very easy for them to navigate. They have to start here between the raft and their rocky outcrop, so looks like they're well clear of that now and well underway. And immediately we see the high arm turnover off the line. The pull speed through the first two to 400 metres, very important. And all of our swimmers looking to try and get clear water early. And a lot of them visualise in training, creating the door with their hands out in front. They open that door and then they look to swim through it. You can't control what is around you. It can be combative by nature and it can turn off a number of swimmers. Well, after a couple of beautiful days prior to this event day, it's a little bit of grey out there, but makes it so much easier for these swimmers to see the marker boys, so they won't be complaining, Mark. This is the number three seed, Jonathan Pullen, deciding today to wear a sleeveless wetsuit, which again <laughs> is gutsy in itself with the water temperature being 18 degrees. Looks like Jonathan's shaved down as well, normally with a pretty good beard on him, and he looks to be just taking this field out at the moment. An established, very, very top open water swimmer and uh, some great placings at this year's New Zealand Open Water Champs. And Jonathan Pullen's taken this out very quickly and somewhat surprised to see Kane Radford just sitting there on his feet wearing the number one cap. And just out to his left, we've got Casey Glover. And out to his right is Henry Norris. 
Well, Radford known for his fast starts. He's obviously just happy to sit on the feet of Pullen at the moment. Conserve some energy in this first 1.4 kilometre straight through French Bay out to the Red Red Rock. So these conditions very, very good for the athletes, as we said. And these swimmers are just slipstreaming, I guess, off Pullen at the moment. Kane Radford more than happy for someone else to do the navigation. He realises he's probably got the strength and endurance. He's got the speed over the last 800 metres. And so tactically we've seen something just a little bit different today from Kane Radford. But Pullen, again, a very relaxed, long, loping stroke. Almost like catch-up. You see one hand coming into the water, almost touching the other arm before that arm comes through. Not dissimilar to what we see in the past with the great Ian Thorpe, which says to me, Scott, he's got a very good kick. He does, and, and a lot of it underwater as well, I think. A good pull-through, as you said. So Henry Norris, who's just behind Pullen, this is uh, Norris here. He came fifth at the State New Zealand Open Water Champs 212. He's a young man, so he's going very well in his development. And Casey Glover in the number three cap, sorry, in the number two cap, has done fantastically well with third places in both the five and ten k at the New Zealand Open Water Champs. And just looking back at some of the other waves that have now left the beach a minute apart, the athletes of course seed themselves according to their ability. And again, that's just for safety reasons and also just making sure that their experience is one of enjoyment, particularly for those taking part in this event for the first time. Well, there's nothing worse than swimming with swimmers that are way faster or way slower. So those speed-seated start groups are there to, to try and swim with swimmers of similar speed. We just saw Jonathan Pullen there rolling over onto his back, doing a little bit of backstroke. That can be to loosen up the shoulders, but more importantly, he just wants to see who's in the mix here and whether or not he does have that wee gap. And great to have the big, bright orange state markers there to guide all of our swimmers around this most beautiful 2.8k swim course. Well, that first state marker signifies five, uh, about 650 metres from shore, so they're just under halfway out to the turning marker. Well, this is a surprise because Pollen just starting to get a little bit of a gap on Radford. And we talked throughout the series the importance of getting on the feet, the importance of getting on the hip of another swimmer. You can save up to 15% energy, but you've got to make sure you do stay in touch. If that gap gets too big, it can just put a little bit of doubt into those athletes who are doing the chasing and they have to do a lot more work to try and overturn, overpull the leader. Well, who knows what uh, Pullen's endurance is like. He obviously was at his peak back in early January and um, if he's been doing the training, he should be able to hold on to this, we would hope. He's, he's uh, been in the open water game for many, many years now and um, his identical twin brother, unfortunately not on the field today with a bit of an injury, Andrew Pullen. It's amazing, isn't it, open water swimming. You get a guy like Kane Radford who's always consistent, but you know that some of these other swimmers have that big day in them, that once-in-a-year type swim where they just get out, they're in the zone, it feels easy. And I just wonder whether today we are seeing this with Jonathan Pullen because so far, so good. And Kane Radford now, though, just beginning to close that gap. Are we seeing the first st strategic move from Kane Radford early in the swim? I think so, Mark. He's not want to, wanting to let him get away. And Radford had a bit of a shocker at the State Capital Classic last, last month. He missed the last can, having to go back out to go around that, and that lost him second place. He came third in the end, lost some valuable points. So this is a very important race for Radford. And Kane Radford, he certainly has the goods in the water. I guess if there is a question mark, it just comes down to overall professionalism. And it's something that National Open Water coach Philip Rush is trying to work with him on. He learned a big lesson at the Capital Classic in Wellington. And the reality is, as good as you are, you still need to listen to the instructions. Professionalism is very much a state of mind. And it's something young athletes need to understand. Now here's a big part of the race now. Radford has taken the lead over Pullen. And uh, maybe this is where he's going to really exert the pressure now. This is interesting because Pullen now has to make a decision. He's probably just going to have to get that arm rate just a little bit higher. Nice to see him just breathing out there to his right. He's historically breathing out to his left. He'll realise that if Radford goes past, the best place he can be is just move alongside of him, try and get on his hip, try and get on the wash of Radford. As we now come back to the leader in our women's race, this is the number two seed, Grace Somerville. Now Grace Somerville, a young open water swimmer from Ashburton, fifth overall in the 10 kilometres and fourth overall in the 5 kilometres at the New Zealand Open Water Champs. And she is the age group champion from 13 to 15 year old age group. She's now 16, but a very, very talented up and comer. And um, she'll be hoping to hang on to this lead. She's got two very talented open water swimmers behind her. 
in uh, Sophia Batchelor, our number one, number one seed, and also Brenda Russell. So having a look where she's going, all important to be looking out every sort of six to eight strokes to be checking on where you're going. And in the other light blue cap, that is number three, and that is Brenda Russell. Wonderful races developing in both the men's and women's. Race four of the State New Zealand Ocean Swim Series, Le Grand Swim in Akaroa.